Yeah, so it says, um, to solve the case below, that are forbidden because it violates the conservation of letter number. And do not choose the case that are forbidden because it violates other conservation laws. Uh, I think I mostly had, uh, uh, mostly had um, the, the conservation of energy in mind. So, um, yeah. So, okay, so I'm just looking for lepton number conservation violation. Um, there's no leptons involved here anywhere, so I'm fine. So that's not uh, forbidden, and it's not from that. Here, muon has lepton number of one going into electron, lepton number of one going into these two. It's actually a lot. This is, um, um, yeah, that's how muon decays. So good. Okay. Proton decaying into postron and electron neutrino, that's a lot because postron, antiparticle of electron, has, um, has left number of minus one. Electron neutrino has left a number of plus one. So it's all, or what's up? Okay, this is uh, prohibited because I have uh, one extra lepton without an a anti lepton to count, uh, to subtract it out. Um, here, pion is decaying into uh, all the number of leptons and anti leptons without checking the combinations. I know it cannot be because I have zero lepton number here. And no matter how you add a plus one and minus ones here, you are going to end up with something that's not zero. Um, the positive K meson decaying into um, muon and anti-muon and uh, muon neutrino. I think that's fine. Zero lepton and zero net lepton. Okay. Oh, and this is now problematic because I have a lepton number of minus one that's decaying into uh, something that adds up to zero lepton number. And um, I think this is fine. Yeah, pi minus decaying into one lepton and an anti-lepton. So that should be the correct answer. And uh, let me wrap up this session this way. I'm gonna draw or at least attempt to draw Feynman diagrams for all of them. And in fact, let me start out with the Feynman diagrams for the process that I didn't check, because this is one of the things that Feynman diagram is actually useful for. It particularly automatically, uh, automatically enforces particle number conservation. So any particles that have a, a conservation law associated with it, if somehow that conservation law is violated, it should be impossible to draw the Feynman diagram. So let me show you. I also, I'll start by you know showing you that I can draw a Feynman diagram for all the ones that I didn't check. So I'll, since I have limited time, I'll just uh, quickly draw them without too much extraneous explanation. So we just looked up quark content for this up, down, and strange. Um, quark content for that should be anti up and down. Quark content that should be, uh, this is how I remember proton is an isospin up particle. So it has more up quarks than a down quark. I don't know if that mnemonic is helpful for anyone else. So, okay, let me match this here. Um, so a one up and one down, it probably goes into a proton. So I have a strange quark, which is gonna turn into an up quark and it will also emit a W boson that's gonna decay into this. Okay, so let me draw this spectator of quarks first. An up quark, a down quark, and finally the strange quark is the one that's gonna do something strange. <laughs> um, so it's gonna turn into an up quark and this up, down and up, this will hadronize into proton. And uh, in the strange quark decaying into up quark, it emits a W boson. And it's going from minus 130 to plus 230. So it's uh, emitting a negative W boson that's gonna quickly decay into the particle antiparticle pairs of um, anti up and down and that's gonna hadronize into negative pi up. Easy peasy. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it's easy peasy, but that's how you draw the Feynman diagram for this process. I think the calculation for that is nightmarish. Is it? 
you know, maybe not. Um, this is actually, you know, this might actually not be that complicated to actually calculate for particle physicists and not for me. I mean, I, I don't know how to do it, but I think in, within the theory of weak interaction, I think that it's probably doable, at least at the level of order of magnitude estimate. Muon, uh, muon decaying into electron and neutrino, antineutrino, and uh, this is minus, not over bar. This is over bar and the uh, mu neutrino. This is actually pretty nice. All these are the elementary particles. I don't have to worry about constituent particles. So I have a muon coming in that's going to decay into um, its uh, counterpart. And counterpart of muon actually is an electron. They are the similar particles. Counterpart of muon is the muon neutrino. So muon is going to decay into its neutrino version. Um, and you know, neutrino doesn't, it, it doesn't even have the same charge. How does it happen? It emits a W boson. That's how it happens. It's a weak interaction. Weak interaction is the interaction that changes the particle types. It goes from muon to muon neutrino. So it should, uh, so the negative charge went with the W boson. And this W boson is now going to decay into a particle antiparticle pair. So the particle should be the electron and the antiparticle should be the electron neutrino uh, or anti-electron neutrino. So that's it. This, in fact, this uh, decay is the cleanest decay for, um, for weak interaction. I think a particle physicist actually use this process to check the theory because it has the least amount of complication from other interactions. This is the cleanest possible weak decay scenario. Um, Okay, let me keep going. Uh, de well, decay of a proton into a neutron and other stuff. Uh, that's an, not something that would happen to a free proton for energy conservation reasons. But uh, this is actually a process that does occur within an atomic nucleus uh, with all the other interaction with other, um, other quarks, it, or sorry, other atomic, other nucleons in an atomic nucleus, there might be circumstances where it's more energetically favorable for a proton to turn into neutron. That, that's where beta plus radiation comes from. So my quark content here is up, up, and down quark turning into up. Neutron is the isospin down particle. So it's gonna be up, down, and down. And these are their own elementary things. Okay, so I see again up and down matching. So one up quark is going to turn into a down quark. Somehow, <laughs> let me draw the spectator quarks first. So I have an up quark that's gonna turn into up quark, meaning you know nothing happens to it. And I have a um, up and down. And I have a down quark that's gonna turn into a down quark. And I have one up quark. That, oops, uh, that actually is going to turn into a down quark. So at this vertex is where, again, I'm changing the particle type. So there must be weak interaction involved. Up quark is turning into down quark, plus two thirds A to minus one third A. So here I must be emitting a positive W boson so that uh, charge is, cons uh, so at this vertex, charge conservation is enforced plus two thirds A comes in, one E and minus one third A goes out. So the charge coming in equals charge going out. This W plus boson, it decays uh, in this picture into two lepton anti-lepton pair. Um, well, this is the anti-lepton, the positron, and this is the lepton, the electron neutrino. So that's it. Uh, these were quark contents of my incoming proton. These will hadronize into neutron, and these are the two particles that are here. Okay, uh, one, uh, two more that I know I can draw. Uh, K meson uh, decaying into muon and um, muon neutrino. And in fact, I think that's the most common decay mode for, wait, is it? No, I think a K meson actually decays into pi uh, mesons more often than into muons, I think. Could be wrong. <laughs> Look it up in the particle data groups uh, table if uh, you are curious and 
you want to make sure that I didn't say something wrong. Um, so positive kaon decaying into muon and uh, neutrino. So kaon uh, has at least one uh, strange quark or, well, um, so in order for it to have positive charge, so it needs to have an up quark with an anti-up or down quark, it cannot possibly reach positive charge. And then if it has anti-strange quark, then this will add up to plus one. Yeah. Okay. So, so really what this interaction is, is up plus is anti-strange turning into this. Two particles into two particles. It's kind of pretty. Um, so yeah, the interaction here is going to look interesting. So let me just, just start by drawing the external lines. I have up quark coming in and I have anti-strange quark coming in, up and anti-strange. Now, what I hope you notice is that on the outgoing side, um, you have nothing that these particles would turn into. So up quark could turn into down quark or strange quark, but that's not on the outgoing side. Uh, the strange quark could turn into up quark, but that's not on the right-hand side. So really what happens here is a pair annihilation. These two join at this vertex to annihilate, I mean, quote unquote annihilate, and they turn into a W boson. Uh, adding up the charges, this should be W plus boson. And this is a virtual W boson decays into this uh, particle-antiparticle pair. It's uh, uh, topologically quite different from all the other ones you have seen. Uh, so this should be neutrino, and this should be muon, uh, anti muon. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it, you might have seen uh, diagrams that actually look similar to this in the QED setup with a pair um, with a pair production. No, that doesn't look like that. Um, mm. I don't know if I've drawn other, I mean, uh, there are diagrams that look like this, uh, like a scattering of electron and positron. Uh, one of the diagrams you can draw is one where there's an intermediate W boson. Like you can draw that, nothing stops you from drawing that. <laughs> um, um, but it, uh, this is different from all the other ones I've been drawing today. So, um, Okay, but that's, that's the Feynman diagram for, so when people want to calculate the decay rate of the K meson into these particles, this is the diagram that they use to organize their calculation. That's, uh, that's what Feynman diagrams are. It's a calculational tool that helps you organize your calculation for people who actually do the calculation, you know, that does, not me. I don't actually know how to do that calculation. Pi minus going into, and pions, I think, do decay into this uh, particular combination rarely. Not often, but rarely they do decay this way. Uh, and I think, uh, wait, do I mention this? Uh, it has to do with the conservation of a helicity, which is a thing you worry about in relativistic quantum mechanics. Doesn't matter for us here. This pion has quark content of anti up and down, make sure charges add up. and. Oh, so this is going to look exactly like the K-meson thing. So um, I have a uh, quark and anti-quark. They're going to annihilate each other at this vertex, down and anti-up, and emit a W boson. And here, this has to be W minus boson, so that charges are conserved. This W boson will turn into particle-antiparticle pair again, um, electron and neutrino anti-neutrino. Yeah, it, uh, I think after a bit of a practice, you start to see kind of the same diagrams over and over. Because all of, with the two vertexes, the number of possibilities are limited. So, it, I mean, there's only so many different ways you can draw these lines. Again, I, the diagrams are not an artistic tool, it's a calculational tool. We don't want lots of variety. In, in fact, uh, um, the diagrams are used to organize calculations that way, meaning um, organize the, the calculations at a particular order that need to be done. Number of vertexes determine the order, and there should be a finite number of diagrams that have a certain number of vertexes. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so, okay. So I have drawn all the Feynman diagrams that I know I can draw. Now I have these three that I have marked before as processes that are impossible. So I know I can't draw Feynman diagrams for those. And let's see why not. Um, neutron turning into proton plus electron. So it's up, down, down quark turning into up, up, and down plus E. So I think, you know, let to deal with these uh, spectator quarks. So, okay, we have those. I'm not gonna worry about those uh, up and down quarks turning into what they already were. I'm only gonna worry about down quark turning into up quark and electron. So I have down quark that's gonna turn into an up quark. So because a particle type is changing, you know, it must involve weak interaction uh, with the charged W boson, uh, W minus. And this is, wait, W minus? Yeah, W minus. And this is where I see that, well, I hope uh, you see that uh, it's not possible for this uh, W boson to simply turn into electron. I guess the easiest way to argue that is that this is not an elementary vertex that exists for a weak interaction. Uh, all the charged weak interaction vertexes, they contain fermion coming in, fermion going out, and a W boson getting emitted from that vertex. So it's a missing a, a particle line. And that missing particle line is the one for the anti neutrino So not having that other particle line, that um, that's what makes this diagram impossible because it forces you to draw a uh, elementary vertex that doesn't exist. This is the form of the elementary vertex for this interaction. So yeah, so that's why this doesn't work. Uh, let's look at pion decaying into all these. And you know, it's a, uh, kind of like the drawings that are impossible to draw at some point it's kind of question be, does become a little bit academic you know why do you care why it's impossible it's simply impossible um so yeah I, well i said i would draw or attempted to draw this so let me finish doing that wait the, yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that were not possible. So pi plus its quark content should be uh, up and anti down, I think. Yeah, that's pi plus. Um, so, oh, I think the, yeah, so let me do that. So on the right hand side, you don't see any quarks. So I think uh, immediately you can see that you should have this annihilation you have seen in other diagrams. Uh, up and anti down quark annihilate each other, uh, turning into a W boson, W plus here. Now, this is where you run into the problem. This W boson, it can only decay into two fermions. That's what the elementary vertexes look like. Uh, so it can decay into the anti electron conserved charge and electron neutrino can decay into those. But in this picture, they wanted a third particle and there's no place for the third particle to come from. I mean, if it's attaching here or here, wherever this third particle or antiparticle attaches, the vertex you end up getting is not an elementary vertex that you are allowed to have. So, so this is what I mean. The Feynman diagram drawing will automatically enforce particle number conservation, ones that are conserved. Because for the ones that are not conserved, you know, up quark or turning into down quark, you have uh, rules within Feynman diagram that tell you how those numbers change. But lepton number, it's an absolutely conserved number. So there are no rules within Feynman diagram drawing rules that would uh, allow for that ever. Okay, muon turning into this. Let's uh, finish that and we will finish up this uh, uh, way over time session. Um, so anti-muon turning into positron and electron neutrino. 
might think, hey, what's wrong with that? I think we have always seen that. So, well, let's see what's wrong with that. So I have an antimion coming in. Um, apparently that's a turning into an electron. Uh, sorry, positron and an electron neutrino. I think it, with this pair, I don't have any problem with that. There probably needs to be like a W boson that's attached there. So that W boson probably needs to come from here. Uh, and here's where I'm running into problem. This vertex is not something that's allowed. Muon can simply disappear into W boson. That's not allowed. It has to turn into another fermion while emitting W boson. So I really want to have muon antineutrino here so that new antimion can turn into that. But without this line, uh, I have end up with a vertex that's not allowed. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, why it's impossible. Uh, that, that's why this process is impossible because it doesn't conserve lepton number. And because it's an impossible process, when you try to draw Feynman diagram, for that process, you run into problems. Yeah. So, yeah. and I do want to make sure that um, that people do see that how I was through, able to do a Feynman diagram for, for example, this process, which um, if this is a free neutron, then it's not a possible process for energetical considerations. So those considerations won't show up in Feynman diagram because you know that's just a consideration that depends on masses and whatnot, parameters that don't come into Feynman diagram. But particle numbers are ones that are evident in Feynman diagram and uh, processes that won't conserve a particle number or flavors in a way that then, um, then, then you will see it even at the step of just drawing the diagram.